Welcome back to the adventures of the members of the Florida Powerboat Club. Joining you here, Stu Jones and Ryan McCoy from the Florida Powerboat Club studio in Pompano Beach as we continue our coverage of the 2020 edition of the Emerald Coast Powerboat Week. And we are now up to episode four with this feature coverage. And it's Saturday morning and the fun is about to begin. And before we get started, let's of course thank our sponsors. Florida Powerboat Club's 2020 series sponsors include Deep Impact Custom Boats and their associated brand, Blackwater Boats, Nortec High Performance Boats, Midnight Express Power Boats, Myco Trailers, Performance Boat Center, Mystic Power Boats, Superior Communications, and Mercury Racing Wide Open. In addition to our 2020 series sponsors, we were joined by these feature sponsors as seen here on our Emerald Coast Power Boat Week official banner, including Allocomp Insurance, Bent Marine, Emerald Grand and Harbor Walk Village, along with Glassstream Power Boats. We are now on the Saturday Poker Run, which is a 120 mile course with seven checkpoints. And when we left off on our last episode, the teams were just starting off here at Destin Harbor, getting their first poker card from our lovely FPC girl, Jasmine, who was one of 10 girls that were here to support this event and part of our Miss Powerboat Week contest. And you're gonna see a lot of these big black boats around on this event, because that's part of Team Black Diamond as Abby gets the poker card off of six carat, that big 59 cigarette Toronto. And she's saying, no, no, back up, back up. Don't hit the dock. And I say that's good advice for this captain because, you know, at 59 feet in length, it's pretty hard to see what's going on down the other pointy end of the boat. And very suitable that Jasmine is in her black bikini today because we got more black boats. That's right, Black Diamond Express, one of the three that are registered here on this event every year. 34-foot MTI powered by Mercury Racing 400Rs. This is the one that has a bunch of hidden fuel cells underneath that are used to fuel its big sister ship, that 52-foot MTI, which is powered by Mercury Racing 1550 dual cal engines. And here she is once again, the showstopper of the Black Diamond fleet, all 52 feet, uh, full canopy, positions for six people on board to ride safely, Mercury Racing 1350-1550 dual cal. Cal, of course, is a reference to calibration which is what you do to reset the engines to run on race fuel. And it's a coming out party of sorts for Octavio Valdivia and his brand new Concept 4400 uh, Quad Mercury Racing Outboards, a big, huge center console platform so he can bring all his friends on board. Of course, his other boat is that big 51-foot Outer Limits, but I think he's gonna find this outboard boat with its uh, air-conditioned cabin down below and plenty of seating for all his friends. It's gonna be a little more convenient to use for these poker run events. And it looks like Robin Kosker is going to do the honors here with her husband, John, on the Mystic-sponsored uh, 4200 Center Console. I want to thank the gang from Mystic for coming on board and coming out to more of these Florida Powerboat Club events in 2020. And a team that has been here many, many times before, Frank and Molly Tubbs in their 38-foot fountain uh, powered by Mercury Racing 500s. 1999 is the haul, but right about now I'm thinking about yellow bikinis. Zane and Amanda Mead, also longtime supporters of this event, and first time now seeing them in this center console, a 42-foot MTI. They've been here many times. It's always been in Fast Cats, but looks like the kids are growing up, and family fun on a center console is the way to go. Perfect for this Emerald Coast Powerboat Week event. And here's another example of how these boats stay in the club, although they do change owners along the way. James Branton, now in this 32-foot skater powered by Mercury Racing 700s, used to belong to another club member. His first mate, Reagan, coming up. She's great with the fenders, she's great with the lines, and always has a big smile showing that she's having a great time. And it's that big 50-foot hustler again, Roy and Amanda Jorgensen, came all the way from Indiana to join us. Team Carpe Dean uh, saw a lot of this boat on the Friday Fun Run in a previous episode. Here they are now, backing away from the dock, did it with style, as this is clearly not their first rodeo. 
Now let's welcome Hayes and Carlin Wilson, uh, formerly from Oklahoma, now spending all their time in the Destin area. And why not? They're celebrating their new Nortec, a 390 Sport, Triple Mercury Racing 400Rs, a boat that they've always been wanting to get their hands on. Uh, they started the club in an Everglades, and although they loved the boat, it was just a little bit too slow for these poker runs, but now they are all set. This Nortec 390 with 400s will run 80 miles an hour all day long, but I think they're going to be comfortable right about 55. And let's welcome Team Rainy Days, another team all the way from Indiana joining us for their first time getting that lucky card. Hard to see the boat from the front here, but as they turn, you'll see that it's very rare. It's actually the only 38 Power Quest that is registered for the Emerald Coast event, but I think it's the only one in the club. 2003 model, clearly they have maintained it very well. Obviously, it's all that fresh water running back at home. And here's a team we've seen quite a bit here at the Emerald Coast. It's Steven and Kelly Marino in their really super cool DCB 35 wide body Mercury Racing 1100s. Guys, this is a beautiful machine and she is fast. They sponsored the event from Team Allocomp in Alabama and they'll be joining us again at the Orange Beach Powerboat Week in May of 2021. The boat named Twin Ladies is named after their twin daughters. Well, they say birds of a feather flock together and that's what's going on here with these DCBs. But this one's a little different. This is a M33R wide body owned by Scott and Monica James. And you can see the difference is, well, it's an outboard DCB, Twin Mercury Racing 450Rs. They said they switched from the 35 found to this boat because they wanted to go faster. They wanted a newer technology and they wanted to try out something a little different. And with the kids all grown up and getting married off, it's just mom and dad now. And that means they get to let their hair down and go play with the Florida Powerboat Club. And I'm glad because they're a lot of fun to hang out with. And it's time for that uh, big money shot that we showed off so many times. It's actually in the new Florida Powerboat Club calendar. And that's because Derek and the crew got together before the event and said, hey guys, let's do something really cool for Emerald Coast Powerboat Week. So they had this all set up. Six carat, 59 cigarette at the top of your screen. A black diamond in the center of your screen, 52 foot MTI. And of course, Black Diamond Express powered by Mercury Racing 400s. But then along comes the newest addition to the family. Uh, they acquired this helicopter about a year ago. This is a Bell Jet Ranger 505, and it has been given the name Team One Carat. Uh, so they've got all four running together now. Uh, what a perfect setup, guys. It doesn't get really much better than this. Uh, holding back, not trying to set any speed records, because of course, those cats will run away from that cigarette all day long. But that cigarette, is indeed the party platform at 59 feet. She's capable of carrying 25 or 30 people on a poker run, but today they've just got a light crew. And every great shoot ends in a giant rooster tail. And so glad to see Chris Villar having fun with his new 39-foot Nortec, Triple Mercury Racing 450Rs, Real Gus. He's been a big fan of the club, he says, for over 10 years, went through his medical training since 2008. So he had to sit back and get through school and avoid getting caught up in the fun because, you know, that's a bad distraction. But it's been his dream, and since about 2014, he started this project to build himself a custom 390 Nortec. And here he is now enjoying the fruits of hard work and his success. And let's join the Fowlers now, uh, Mike and his wife Lisa, along with Kyle Fowler, uh, who are now enjoying this Fountain 38 center console. New to the family because they've done a lot of poker runs in the 35-foot Lightning, uh, but the center console was the way for them to go, powered by Mercury Racing 400R Verados. What do they love about power boating? Well, getting away from the everyday life and social distancing on the open waters. So as the Fowlers now head off to checkpoint number two, let's circle back and get the final shots at checkpoint number one in Destin Harbor. And now getting their first poker card, Mark and Lana Albert in their 35 Fountain. Look at Lana Puss, they've been here on this event many, many years with this 35 Fountain. And a big shout out to Lana who's been in the gym and looking great in her bikini. I'm sure she's making her man real proud right about now. Wes Harlow is from Pensacola, Florida, making him one of the local teams. He's come so far on this event over the years, started off with a 26-foot Rinker single-engine boat. Now he's enjoying this 35-foot DCB catamaran with 850 horsepower per side. And he says that the Emerald Coast Powerboat Week is his favorite poker run of the year. 
Tyler Jones uh, helping out with our lovely card girl as Steven and Kelly Marina pull up. There's Kelly grabbing their first poker card of the day. This 35-foot DCB is a 2019 model with Mercury Racing 1100s. They made their debut here at the Emerald Coast event just two years earlier. And it's another DCB, this one a 29. George Ariano from Ocala. Many of us know George. He's a very active member with the club, and he owns a lot of fiberglass. This is one of three DCBs he owned until he sold his 2010 35 to his friend Wes Harlow, who you just saw a minute ago. And flying his uh, Gators flag proudly, Chris Villar, who now lives up here in the Pensacola area, originally from South Florida. Uh, when he finished his school, he became a neurosurgeon, which allows him to enjoy his powerboating lifestyle and travel around the state to join us on these Florida Powerboat Club events. And here's some more loyal Gators fans, uh, Donald and Dagan Brady. This time, not only do they love the Gators, they named their boat Swamp Chomp. Uh, actually, Donald Brady's been a part of this event for many years, about 10 consecutive years on the Emerald Coast Powerboat Week. And he's been enjoying a lot of those years in this 2013 35 foot Everglades powered by triple Yamahas. In his video bio, Donald said that the Powerboat family is an awesome, happy bunch that like having fun, and that's who we are. Well, Donald, I can't agree more. Now let's welcome newcomers Bill and Meg Wiles. It was their very first event with FPC. They said that they had a great time, met some great people, and they'll be back for more. Well, they weren't kidding because just after this event, they signed up for the Key West Poker Run and trailered the boat all the way from Texas to South Florida. And let's say hi to Team Never Enough and another very seasoned team when it comes to the Emerald Coast because they've been coming back here for years. All the way from Texas uh, with their 42-foot fountain. Notice it's an executioner model, different than the Lightning, and it sure is clean for a 2006 model powered by a pair of Mercury Racing 525s. And let's say hi once again to John and Connie Fammy from Georgia with their 34-foot Sensation CCX model as Connie reaches out to get that lucky card. And I want to congratulate them on getting their new condo in Panama City Beach. It's from there that they traveled to the poker run. It's 60 miles each way on their own bottom. They said it was a great ride, and they love doing this event year after year. And another new team, Stephen and Casey Head, their first time with us here on Emerald Coast Powerboat Week and their Formula 353 Fast Tech. And I appreciate their comments in their video bio. The reason they're here is from watching all those FPC videos on YouTube. And we're back out on the open waterways now as we're getting ready to run, catching up with James Branton. Uh, he's also joined here at the event by mom and dad, uh, David and Leanne Branton, who are running in a 368 skater. He just got his hands on this 32 from another club member. It's powered by Mercury Racing 700s. It's a wide body, you can see that, a very stout platform, and this boat is one fast little skater. And now it's time to catch up with mom and dad, uh, David and Leanne Branton from Louisiana in this new 368 skater that is part of the Voodoo fleet. It's powered by Mercury Racing 1100s. And they say it's an interim boat while they're building another skater at the present time. And what's their favorite thing about power boating? They said it's the freedom to make your own responsible choices about the route and the speed. And it's our first time seeing this new 32 Spectre registered under the name DR Performance. Uh, it's a brand new cat uh, to Robbie. His last boat was a glass stream. He seems to be wanting to go fast, and this is the perfect platform to do that. Mercury Racing 400Rs, very reliable outboards. And they are going to be representing this boat from their dealership in Lake Lanier, Georgia. And it's time for a little change of scenery now as we approach uh, car checkpoint number two. This is a big yacht that is positioned right off of Sand Destin. 
It's called After Five. It's a 70-foot Maritimo yacht owned by Jack Wilson, who lives in Destin. And it's his second year in a row that he's helped us out with the poker run. Last year, it was with the Coyote Ugly Girls on board. This year, he's got the FPC Girls. Mike and Susan Pasco enjoying their new 41-foot cigarette, replacing their 42X, which was powered by Mercury Racing 860s. When they're not on poker runs with the club, their home base is at Lake Lanier, Georgia. And that looks like uh, Chris Domino from Texas and his uh, Doug Wright cat making his way up to after five. They've got a little raft up going on the yacht. That's one of our safety boats, and uh, that gave us the opportunity to be on board to get some of these camera shots as our FPC girls uh, reaching out there with that big, long pole. Uh, we designed it so that the boat could come up right off the transom of the yacht. You can see those two big fenders. Uh, but Chris came up alongside, and then he got caught by the wind. Uh, and just in time, was able to reverse out and save any damage. But when we do these checkpoints, uh, if it does get windy, we often will cancel them. And I think we're sort of at the stage here where we might have done that. Uh, but everybody was okay. They seemed a little more comfortable coming up alongside for some reason. And I think that maybe uh, we should have put some more fenders out on the starboard side of that boat. Uh, but uh, one after another coming up and getting their cards here at Sandestin. I would even suggest maybe putting the yacht even closer to the shoreline and getting out of the windy conditions uh, so that we can do this card handoff safely. And it looks like uh, Jim Duff and Jerry Swanson and making their way up with all three boats. Uh, Jim Duff, first of all, in this 41-foot AMG cigarette pulling up for their card. They've got a full crew on board today. And I really want to commend uh, this captain for how he came up here to do the card. He got the nose of the boat into the wind and just came up very slowly and cautiously and let the girls do their magic with that big eight-foot long poker pole and a little reach over the bow, and that's all it takes. Guys, done with style, not their first rodeo, and looking fine here at the Emerald Coast Power Boat Week. And team number 22, this 46 skater, also part of the Jerry Swanson and Jim Duff uh, fleet. And they took a different approach coming up alongside downwind, uh, starboard side to the transom, which was a smart move because you can see that the wind direction is only gonna push them away from the yacht. So all the captain had to do was to get the nose up close enough so they could pick up the card and the wind took care of the rest as they pulled away. And you gotta love this shot here, a total of four boats lined up for their cards powered by a total of 16 outboards, uh, just to show you just how much things have changed here in this sport. Of course, the most asked question on this boat is, why did you put six outboards on the back of that Tirana? And the answer from the captain is, that's because we couldn't fit seven. And a nice shot up here from the flybridge on this Maritimo 70, which by the way is for sale. I think the girls really liked it. They're hoping that somebody buys it and they can go for a ride on it every day. About 2.9 million will do the job. Boy, I think I'm watching that uh, Hallover video channel here with that almost near stuff. I mean, I don't know where that big wave came from, but <laughs> these waves all of a sudden are surging as uh, Chris Batchelor negotiates his 23-foot Baja up to the transom of this Marotimo. But once he sticks the nose in nicely and just takes his time, I think that was the magic that got him up here safely to get the card, but uh, a little bit more rugged conditions than we expected and something for us to certainly consider uh, going forward in uh, 2021 as we do this uh, yacht checkpoint. And now we're gonna say hi to uh, Paul Bertusi and his crew, Team Beer Money from Gulfport, Mississippi. Got himself a big crew here today on this 39 foot deep impact. Looks like we should be nominating Paul and his crew for the sexiest crew award here at Emerald Coast. And now that third boat from the Swanson Duff Fleet. This is Team Terrible, 2001 skater, powered by big Sterling 1800s, as they managed to successfully pick up that card without scratching that art of design paint job. And another graceful pass from Team High Bid, Daniel Ferris in this 34-foot Nortec, powered by triple Mercury 350s. I know, right? And followed up by Terrell and Clara Clark from Texas in this 36-foot sensation. Well, 
Well, that was a great segment there at card checkpoint number two with uh, the team after five, that 70-foot mirror team. Of thanks to Jack Wilson and his crew. But we're now going to move into a different part of the Poker Run course. You can see the winds have lightened up just a little bit as we now catch up with George and Kerry Olson on this 42-foot fountain uh, executioner model, Mercury Racing 525s. And they've just got it on cruise control as they head across Chalk to Hatchie Bay. Now they're going to be moving westbound to the next few checkpoints. We've got one in Niceville on the north side of the bay, another one at Shalimar, and the third one is going to be Brooksbridge Marina. And that will complete our five morning checkpoints that are all at the east end of the course uh, before our teams will head westbound towards Navarre and Pensacola Beach. And now I'm going to spend a little time with the Jones family, uh, yours truly, along with my wife Jackie, uh, sons Tyler and Maxwell, as we ride on Project 1080, again heading westbound on the Intracoastal. And you can just see how much the winds have now died down and we've got some really calm waterways. Of course, this Project 1080 powered by Mercury Racing 540s, and they are loud. And I don't want to hear any jokes about my Bimini top, guys. It's the middle of August, that sun is brutal, and I've been doing this stuff for 30 years, so I need a little help. <laughs> I kind of like this shot uh, from the GoPro that's mounted on the tail fin of our R44. Get an idea of just how the course changes. This is the ICW section along Santa Rosa Sound. It's quite narrow through these parts and there's a lot of traffic, but then it opens up into this much wider bay area and that's where you can really hit the throttles and run. And that's exactly what we're doing now with Kevin Kurkowski from Texas in this 35 foot fountain. Good to have Kevin back, he took a few years off. Looks like the boat is running just as good as ever. And you can also see that uh, as we get into the day, the weather is really cooperating for us and giving us a great day for a Pokemon. And you notice this shot with this barge on uh, over the port side. You know, these barges and commercial traffic run up and down these waterways pretty much every day of the week. So it's something to be mindful of uh, when you're here on this Emerald Coast event. And going to get some uh, nice time now with the bachelors in this 23 Baja. The team is made up of Chet, the father, Chris, the son, and Daniel, the son-in-law. And they had apparently been watching the YouTube videos for years and even came out here to spectate on the poker run in previous years. But uh, they decided it was time to step up to the plate and they brought this 23 Baja, got it all prepped and came out to the event. And what they saw and experienced was far and above what they expected. They said it was just fabulous in every way, met a lot of new friends and took home a lot of memories. So. A lot of nice things said here, guys. I really appreciate that. Glad you could join us. So we're gonna backtrack uh, just a little bit now and continue showcasing our Poker Run checkpoints uh, here on Choctahatchee Bay. That was the Mid-Bay Bridge we just crossed over. Now we're in the north end of the course up in Niceville. Actually, this is called Boggy Bayou as we fly over now the Wharf 850. They came to our rescue uh, to be a checkpoint when we were told by Emerald Coast Marine uh, Center, that's located just about a half a mile away, that they did not want to be involved with the poker run due to uh, COVID concerns. And uh, I had a hard time uh, trying to swallow the COVID concern on this one because basically we are just uh, pulling up to the dock to get a poker card and moving on. So anyway, guys, uh, thanks to Wharf 850 for coming on board. And thanks to this lovely crew member who's on board with Brad Hancock on this Nortec 47 for wearing that beautiful bikini. And one more time with Chris Villar here in his Nortec 390, real Gus. And by the way, that, uh, that gator flag that he flies is on a carbon pole. He leaves it up all the time. So when they're going fast, you know, 70 miles an hour, that pole is up and that flag is getting beat to death. You can see, if you look closely, how frayed it is along the one edge. Uh, but he says he's only broken one flagpole so far, not bad. And one more time with John and Connie Fammy from Georgia, Southern Yankee, and my, how time flies. I remember when they joined originally, and they had a 34-foot power quest. That became a Baja 38 Special. Then they went to a big Outer Limits 42. That was a really nice boat. 
and decided, well, this is where we're going to land with a triple engine Sensation 34 CCX. And they really love boating in this area. They said in their video bio that from Crab Island to Navarre Beach, Destin offers some of the best boating along the Gulf Coast. And it looks like Big Rick is going to be getting the card for Mike and Susan Pasco, Team Coin Operated. This uh, brand new Cigarette 41 Nighthawk center console. And looking very casual, that's uh, Kirk Smith from Georgia also, former member with the club. Uh, but Mike's got to be loving this boat because it's a big change from his 42X model. He's got a lot more room to move around and four reliable upwards. And this might be another contender for a sexiest crew award as the beautiful Dagon comes up to pick up their card. Team Swamp Chomp 2 is an Everglades and it replaced the previous boat. Donald's been doing this event for over 10 years and he said he just loves coming back. Every time they finish one event, they start planning the following year right away. You gotta love that loyalty. We're gonna get a chance to really see this Everglades run. He joined us for the Sunday shoot where we went offshore. We'll have that coverage on a future episode. And a closer look now at Team Six Carat, a boat that was debuted at the Miami Boat Show just two years earlier. This Cigarette Toronto was powered by Mercury Racing 400Rs at the time, but then just about three months later, the boat appeared at the Nashville product launch for the Mercury Racing 450R. And of course, on the back, these six Mercury Racing 450Rs. It was the first boat ever to carry six of these new outboards on one transom. And it's one more time for Lucky Lana getting her card number three now. We saw her earlier in the show getting card number one at Destin Harbor. Riding along with Hubby Mark and their friends on this 35-foot fountain. They've been here many, many years now. They just keep coming back because they love the Emerald Coast Powerboat Week. <laughs> And jumping ahead now to checkpoint number four and special thanks to Two Georges Marina in Shalimar. It's a location that's been a part of this event for over two decades. It's under new management, new ownership now by George Fussell Jr. and his wife and they're doing a great job with their renovations and they continue to support this event. That's three years in a row now that they've been a checkpoint sponsor and we really thank them for their continued support. And a very big shout out to Tony and Jessica Gilo. They came all the way from Dunedin, Florida with their 39-foot Midnight Express. Guys, do the math on that. That's close to 500 miles over the water with just one way to Destin. And that takes care of uh, four checkpoints that we've now highlighted in these first few episodes with continuing coverage of our Emerald Coast Powerboat Week. We've still got three more checkpoints to showcase and a lot of boating all the way westbound on this 120-mile course from Sandestin to Pensacola Beach. It's the 28th year of the Emerald Coast event, and it was 1999 when the Florida Powerboard Club came here to get involved with local organizers. And we have fallen in love with the local waterways and helped to build this event to what it is today. Well, with the COVID crisis, we only managed to have 70 teams, but those 70 teams can all agree we had a fantastic time. And we promise more episodes with feature coverage of this 2020 event. Well, guys, we're at the 30-minute mark, and that means it's time to say goodbye, at least for now. But please keep on watching us here on our YouTube channel. And the one way to do that is just go ahead and click that subscribe button and also the notification bell so you'll get all the updates every time a new episode is released. We're back in the studio, and we've got plenty more to come with Emerald Coast feature coverage, followed by the Tampa Bay Poker Run, and, of course, that epic Key West Poker Run from Miami to Key West. So there is a lot of exciting footage in the pipeline. For membership information as well as upcoming events for 2021, please visit our website at flpowerboat.com where you'll also find historic archives from all of our events going back more than 25 years. You can follow us on Facebook at Florida Powerboat Club as well as these Instagram pages and Twitter. Thank you to all of you for your nice comments that you leave with us here. 
on our YouTube page. But if anybody would like to reach me directly for any questions about the Florida Powerboat Club or this particular episode, please just email me at stu at flpowerboat.com. That's it for now, guys. Uh, Stu Jones here along with our producer, Ryan McCoy, at the Pompano Beach FPC Studios. Thanks for watching. Remember, if you're out there boating during the holiday season, remember that you are responsible for the safe operation of your crew and your vessel. Please wear your life jackets when the time is right, and always be respectful to your fellow boater. Take care, guys. Bye for now.